come down. I just listed some of the states uh, where we had seen a, a, an increase and now we're seeing a decline this past week. Uh, they came down at the fastest pace in over a decade this summer and have continued to fall in recent days. And But at the same time, P Putin's war continues. His war uh, on Ukraine, his unprovoked war, brutal war on, on Ukraine continues. And so it puts pressure on our global energy supplies because of this war. And so he's going to continue to take action. The president, President Biden, is going to continue to take action to make sure that he lowers costs. In response to those who would say, who are criticizing the White House, saying that this seems like a ploy ahead of the midterms? Look, the president, I, I would say to, this to, to folks. Um, should the president not do everything that he can to lower prices? Uh, should he not continue to keep his prime promise to give American people a little bit of breathing room? You know, that's the promise that he's made. Should he not do that? And so that's what you're seeing right now. Uh, this is something that he has done throughout the summer. Uh, this is something that he has done uh, to address Putin's price hike. Uh, and this is something that he has done to meet the global challenges uh, that are in front of us. Uh, it's been eight months since Brittany Griner became a detainee of the Russians. She turned 32 years old today. A statement that was released through her representative said, thank you to everyone for fighting so hard to get me home. All the support and love are definitely helping me. My, my first question as it relates to Brittany Griner is, has the U.S. had any consular access to Brittany Griner since the beginning of August? As of last week, they had not. Have they in the course of the last week? So I want to be very clear here because uh, this is important. This is important to the president. This is important to this administration. Uh, getting Brittany home, getting uh, Paul Whelan home is a priority for this administration. Uh, they are wrongfully detained and they should be home today. And so the president, his National Security uh, Council, the State Department is going to do everything that we can uh, to get them home. I don't have anything else to preview for you at this time or to update you, uh, but it is a, it is a, um, it is continues, continues uh, to be a priority for this administration. Well, frustration about this. So you can't say if in the last week there's been any access to her, right? So we're going to continue to work through our channels uh, that we have uh, with Russia on, on getting her home, getting Paul home. In terms of access, we can't, we presently can't say. I, I guess I, how, do we, how, do we, how do we tell the American people, do we know that she is well? Do we know that her condition is well right now? When's the last time we got some indication of her, her circumstances? No, it's a very birth? good question. Don't have any, don't have any update on you, uh, for you on that piece. What I can say, it is a priority. You've heard from this president, you heard from Secretary Blinken, you've heard from the National Security Advisor, and we are going to continue to talk through on our channels until this moves from a priority to a reality. Uh, we've had success, as you know, Peter, with bringing Americans home from Russia, from Afghanistan, from Venezuela, from Burma, from Haiti, uh, West Africa, and more. So we have had success in doing this. Uh, we're going to keep, we're going to be steadfast on, on making sure that uh, Brittany and Paul come home. One quick follow-up. I know we're going to hear from the president. More detail as it relates to the questions my colleagues have asked about oil specifically. But can you today rule out um, an export ban that would send oil overseas? I, I am not going to get ahead of this president. I'm not going to so be... The president address that specifically, I, I guess. I'm not going to lay out or preview what the president's going to address or not address. I'm not going to get ahead of him. We'll let him make the announcement tomorrow. So not, just to be clear, if you're not going to get ahead of him, that means that's an issue about which he'll be I, speaking, I, so you don't want that, to get ahead that, of him. That is, that is not what I said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not asking about uh, what he's going to say. I'm asking I, about that specific I, question. I, and I'm answering that specific question, which is I'm not going to get ahead of the president. He's going to make an, his announcement tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Karine. Following up on something Steve was asking, what is President Biden's top domestic priority now? Is it inflation or is it abortion? The president's going to continue to talk about issues that matter to the American people. And abortion is one of them. Majority of the American people uh, disagree with the decision that uh, that the Supreme Court made, the Dobbs decision. That is a majority of the people uh, disagreed with that. When it comes to the economy, the president has made it very, very clear. When it comes to inflation, it is the, his number one economic priority, and he is doing everything that he can to make sure that we lower prices and for the American people. It's his number one economic priority. We've heard the president say inflation is his top domestic priority, but now he's saying come next year, his first bill would be abortion-related. So is his number one domestic priority 
abortion or is it inflation? Well, let's not forget what the president has done the last 19 months. He has made the economy his top priority. He, he has passed the American Rescue Plan, by, by the way, as you heard me say all the time, no Republicans voted for that in Congress. And it was a plan that helped us get back on our feet with the economy, that helped us gain or uh, create 10 million jobs uh, that we had lost. Uh, it also put money in people's pockets. It also made sure that uh, businesses were uh, were uh, were able to open up. Schools were able to open up. People were able to go back into their homes, save their homes. And so that was the American Rescue Plan. That's the bipartisan infrastructure legislation, which was, again, to invest in ports, invest uh, in the infrastructure that was dwindling. And so that is something that he did. The Infl Inflation Reduction Act, that is lowering costs for the American people. He is working on the economy every day. I just announced yesterday, or we just announced yesterday, here Hearing aids, 30 million people are going to benefit from hearing aids, saving thousands of dollars a year. So that's working on the economy every day. So you said he's been working on the economy every day for 19 months. Now Bloomberg economists are forecasting a 100% chance of a recession. So how is it that we can be barreling towards a recession uh, and the economy is, as the president says, strong as hell? So here's the thing about the economy, and I've said this many times. You've heard this from Secretary Yellen. You've heard this from Brian Deese, who runs our economic council, is that what we are seeing right now is the job market is strong. The labor force is strong. And that is not what we see usually before, uh, before a recession. And so the and a lot of that is because of the work that this president has done. We we are seeing an, an economy that is resilient. Uh, we are seeing an economy uh, that is going through to into a transition uh, with more stable growth, more st steady growth, and that is because of the work that this president has done. That is because of the economic policy that he has put forward. And let me remind you, the economic policy that he's put forward is about building the economy from the bottom to to the, from the bottom to the the top and the middle out. And that is so important because it means that we leave no one behind. It means that there's equity in everything that he uh, puts forward. And so, again, you're going to hear from the president about gas prices. That's, again, trying to make sure that we continue to keep prices low for the American and people. Last one, just if President Biden keeps going to the petroleum reserves when there are energy problems, is he giving up on his campaign pledge to end fossil fuel? So I want to be very clear on that piece. Um, you know. There is no shortage of opportunity or incentive for oil companies to ramp up production. We've made that clear. Oil companies are ranking in record profits, as we have seen. They have showed it themselves. We've seen it ourselves. While more than 9,000 approved drilling permits remain untapped by the oil industry. At the same time, U.S. oil production is up and on track to reach a record high this year. Again, a record high. In fact, the United States has produced more oil in President Biden's first year uh, than under the Trump administration's first year. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, Madam, I had a question on uh, Haiti. Uh, the U.S. is uh, trying to work on a, on a resolution that would get the Security Council to sort of support uh, something that they call the non-UN security mission led by a partner country. Can you tell us what that would look like? And talking about the U.S. specifically, does that possibly include actual U.S. troops, or would that be logistical support, financial support? So um, as, as you heard from the amb ambassador, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield yesterday, she laid out in her remarks uh, at the UN Security Council, the United States and Mexico are working on a draft UN uh, Security Council resolution that would authorize a non, to your point, a non-UN international security assistance mission to help uh, improve the security situation in Haiti. As she noted, the resolution would outline a mission led by a U.S. partner country with deep experience, and it would be limited and carefully scoped. Uh, that is what the, the what that is what we laid out yesterday. Conversations are ongoing with partners with necessary experience to have expressed the interest uh, of leading that effort and contributing to a, a non uh, UN mission and playing leading or central roles <laughs> in the effort as well. As I just stated, the United States is considering the most effective ways to directly support, enable, and resource uh, such an effort. Uh, again, it, they are uh, conversations are ongoing uh, on how to move this process. Forward. There's still a possibility or consideration for possible U.S. troops, or is that off the table? 
again, it is the ongoing conversations on how to move forward. Uh, I'm not going to lay those out right now. Madam, Sorry. Uh, what, what? Thank you. Um, I have two questions. One is domestic and one is foreign. Okay. On domestic, uh, the New York Times poll showed yesterday that more than a third of independent voters and a smaller but smaller contingent of Democrats said that they are open to supporting candidates who reject the legitimacy of the 2020 election. So while you're highlighting the abortion issues, obviously the voters are, cons are focusing on uh, recession, inflation, and economy. How worried is the White House considering uh, this poll that was published by the New York Times? Can you say, can you say it again, the, the beginning of uh, the sure. poll? The poll showed that more than a third of independent voters and a small contingent of Democrats said they are open to vote or to support candidates who reject the legitimacy of 2020 election? Look, you know, we've spoken about that uh, many times, uh, about um, uh, about those about those who voted, in, and I want to be careful, well, it's the past election of 2020 and how they, uh, and the legitimacy of, of 2020. Look, um, when the president came into office, he understood uh, the importance of, um, his election, the importance of the moment that he was in, uh, the importance of bringing uh, people together. Uh, and so, you know, we are aware of that. We are aware of uh, how people may feel about the last election. Uh, but the president's going to stay steadfast on the American people. He's going to, he has always said he is, uh, he is a president for people who voted for him or in people who didn't vote for him. He's a president for people who live in red states and blue states. It doesn't matter to him. Uh, but also, um, you know, that's why you hear him talk about the importance of democracy, uh, the, important, uh, the importance of uh, making sure that we protect and fight uh, for our democracy. You heard him uh, give a very powerful, thoughtful speech not too long ago in Pennsylvania uh, about this very issue. Uh, and so he's going to uh, certainly, uh, you'll continue to hear uh, from him how important it is uh, to make sure that we live up uh, to our, uh, to our um, you know, to who we are as a country. And also on foreign policy, uh, President Zelensky thanks the Saudis for giving $400 million in humanitarian aid. Uh, do you welcome this? And uh, considering your grievances against OPEC Plus, that whatever they did was indirectly helping the Russians. So look, the decisions that uh, OPEC Plus made um, just last week uh, is uh, it was we believe uh, sided with the Russians and was against the interests of the American people and the families around the world. We believe that decision is going to hurt and harm low, uh, you know, low, uh, lower income economies, uh, and uh, and uh, it is a it was a a misguided uh, and it was a mistake and a short sighted decision. And so, look, we've talked about what the president's going to do next. He's going to reevaluate uh, his relationship uh, with, uh, with Saudi Arabia. This is something that he has talked about since the beginning of this administration. He wants to do it in a bipartisan way, which is the way it has been done for the last uh, eight decades when we talk about our relationship with Saudi Arabia. So he is going to do this in a methodical way, in a strategic way, uh, and he is going to certainly get uh, input from members of both parties. Uh, but it doesn't take away. I know what you just laid out, the assistant, but it doesn't take away uh, what OPEX Plus uh, did. That decision uh, was a mistake. And so, again, we're going to reevaluate that relationship and we'll have more to share. Uh, Madam, thank you, Madam. Go ahead, this one. Yeah. Thanks so much. No. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, sort of following up on that, um, are any Biden administration officials planning to go to the Future Investment Initiative uh, Conference in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia later this month? Yeah, we don't have anything to preview or announce at this time on any travel. Do you think it's appropriate for U.S. businesses to continue their engagement um, or investment in the kingdom in light of uh, what happened recently? So as they do uh, in every part of the world, American companies will make their own decisions about their presence and where to invest, uh, taking into account a range of factors, in, including legal constraints, uh, the business environment, and rep reputational concerns uh, that can arise from public policy choices made uh, by ho host countries. I want to follow up on the Saudi Arabia question and then ask one about student loans. One of the arguments Saudi Arabia is making to justify their decision to uh, increase oil production is that the price of oil is about the same as what it was before Russia invaded Ukraine. What's wrong with that argument? 
Look, we've made it, we've made it very clear uh, that in the time of uh, what's going on, what we're seeing with the global markets, uh, the decision that they made, the OPEC, OPEC plus decision, uh, was a mistake. It was short-sighted. Uh, we've been very clear about that. Uh, and, um, you know, it, the, again, the way that we see it, it was uh, they, they sided with, with Russia on this. And it's going to hurt uh, American, the American people. It's going to hurt families across, uh, across the country. Uh, and we will have more to share on how our relationship is going to look like moving forward. Can I ask you about the deadline? Thank you, Madam. Just a follow-up oh, to Peter. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Yesterday, Secretary Cardona said the administration is working on ways to forgive the privately held student loans. Um, can, can you say how confident you are that that will happen and whether borrowers can expect an announcement on that before they have to resign payment? Um, I'm going to leave that to the Department of Education. Like you said, Secretary Cardona is working on that, uh, so we don't have anything to share at this time. Uh, clearly, it is a, a priority and something that is an important, uh, important for this administration to make sure that private borrowers are also have an opportunity here. Uh, uh, just want to see parts of the briefing room, you know, come to the back, yeah. maybe. Just to follow up on Peter's question on, on Brittany Greiner, has, has the administration had any recent communications with Russia? about uh, these cases in an attempt to, to win uh, Brittany Griner and Paul Reynolds. Look, as we've, as we've said before, uh, we try to keep these negotiations um, uh, private and uh, just don't have anything to share on any recent conversations. But this is a priority. And then just one on the pipeline. Uh, police in Denmark said that uh, their preliminary investigation into the leaks in which we wanted to uh, they, they said it was caused by a powerful, by a powerful explosion. Uh, that's in line with what Sweden had said earlier. Um, does the administration have any um, reaction to these new findings, and, and does the president believe that Russia was behind this alleged sabotage? Well, the president has been very clear that it was clearly a sabotage uh, when it comes to the pipeline. Uh, we've also said we know this investigation is going to take some time, and it's going to be a a long process before we get to the end of it, so don't want to get ahead of uh, ahead of the investigation. I'm going to go to the back. Yeah. 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 Thank you, I wanted to follow up on some of the questions from yesterday about the midterms, and I understand you have the Hatch Act to consider, but um, what I was curious is, even though we're seeing the president out there, he's been doing these smaller events with smaller audiences. He's been doing closed door fundraisers with no photographers. Why aren't we seeing big campaign rallies? Uh, is anything on the schedule with the election less than three weeks away? Look, I can't answer that question from here. Uh, it, it is a, a, a election, an election that's currently happening at this time, so I am very limited to what I can say from the podium, from the White House. Uh, what I can say is that uh, the president has been on the road. He will continue to be on the road. Um, uh, I just can't say more than that. Uh, you have seen him. He was in Portland, Oregon, uh, doing events. He was in California doing events. Uh, and he was in Colorado doing events. Um, I will say that uh, they were all pretty well attended, but I'll leave it there. But can I also just follow up? Um, he has been doing less travel than, for example, what we saw President Obama do in the, the uh, first in October of 2010. Can you give anything about the schedule, anything that may be coming up, any stops he may be doing? Well, we announced that, he's, he, as you know, he's going to go to Pennsylvania on Thursday. He's going to go to Florida on November 1st. Uh, there will be more travel to come. Certainly not going to get ahead of, of any announcements uh, from here. Uh, but again, the president, as you know, and we have said this many times before, he enjoys getting out there. He enjoys talking to the American people. This is something that he wants to continue to do. And we have something to talk about, right? We have some uh, successes, some wins uh, to talk about. And I just laid them out, the Infl Inflation Reduction Act and the lower cost uh, for, uh, for health care costs for American people is going to lower uh, costs for our seniors. As we talk about Medicare, it's going to lo lower energy costs. These are real wins. Uh, that we have delivered for the American people, that congressional Democrats have delivered for the American people, where Republicans, their plan, their plan is to take that away. They want, they want to take away lowering costs on health care. They want to take away lowering costs on energy. And so what the president's going to continue to do is figure out how he's going to deliver for what matters the most for the American people. Thank you, Corrine. Um, the president promised to send a bill to Congress to codify Roe earlier today. Uh, I've got two basic questions about that. Number one, would that bill simply codify Roe, 
or would it go farther and overturn individual state abortion restrictions? And then number two, are there any abortion restrictions at all that the president would support? What the president is going to do and wants to do and believes in doing is codifying Roe. He believes uh, that is uh, what it was the the law of the land, the constitutional right for almost 50 years, uh, and it's he believes in its specific provisions was rightly decided. He has said this regularly, including right after Dobbs, and uh, that has not changed. Right, but that's that didn't answer either question. There's. First of all, the, there are individual state restrictions on abortion in the, on the books currently around the country. Um, some of those existed before the Dobbs case, before the overturn of Roe. Would the president, with this bill, codify Roe? Does he want that bill to go farther? And I just, I just and, answered that question. And he believes he, I just answered that question. He believes in Roe and how, and how it stood before the Dobbs decision. Okay, and then on the individual restrict or. Are there any restrictions whatsoever that the president would support when it comes to abortion? He be, again, he believes in the provisions that Roe had, um, and that's where he stands. I would suggest you reading it so you get a sense of what the president uh, stands and what he wants to see. All right, shifting to a different topic then. Um, why is it that the president was talking about nuclear Armageddon behind closed doors to political donors two weeks ago? rather than speaking directly with the American people about that topic. Well, there was press, your colleagues, there were a few of your colleagues that were in the room. Well, given the severity and the significance of that threat, isn't that something that the president should perhaps Well, we've address? talked about, we... Or should, should I mean, but there was, there was again, there was press in the room. It's not like he was saying, he was not saying it in secret. He knew that the press was in the room uh, at the time when he was making the comments. Look, the president, we've talked about this. This is like two weeks ago conversation. We, we, we've talked about this in, in detail about how seriously uh, we take uh, Putin's saber rattling. Uh, uh, Putin's comments about nucle using nuclear weapons, that is something that we take seriously. Do we see anything at this time that, uh, that causes us to move our, our strategic positioning? No, not at this time. But it matters uh, that that's, that rhetoric is being used. And so the President has spoken to this. Uh, I have spoken to this. The National Security Advisor has spoken to this. Uh, again, it was not in secret. Uh, the reason why you know that it happened is because there were reporters there. Go ahead. Thank you. Th thank you. A follow up on the, the first of uh, the questions just now. Is there any uh, chance that OMB may put out the text of whatever this legislative proposal is before, say, a Democratic majority on January 3rd of next year, that, that people can see exactly what the legislative language is that, that is being proposed here? Because the, the bill that they voted on, on on Capitol Hill a couple of times, the Women's, Women's Health Protection Act, uh, was broader than than what I believe you're talking about now. Well, as the president said, that he would send this piece of legislation right to Congress, and he believes Roe and its specific pr provisions should stand. That's what uh, this piece of legislation that he would write, that he would send to Congress, uh, would look like. Uh, and uh, he's been very, very clear about this. He made that. Uh, statement when he, when uh, the Dobbs decision was decided in, in June, uh, he is very very clear that what Ro, the Rose decision uh, was rightly the when Roe was first put into place that was the in its in its form uh, was rightly decided and that's what he wants to see and that's what you're going to see he, he push forward in, in, uh, uh, in the next uh, Congress. I'll follow up on the student loan question that was last asked a little earlier too. Uh, the President yesterday, uh, for those of us who were in the South Court Auditorium, mentioned the concerns about the legal challenges. Uh, is there a message to the people, the tens of millions of Americans who are signing up for this forgiveness right now, who may be eager to see it actually come into their, their uh, accounts, who may face the possibility that at least for a while there's a federal judge somewhere who stops it? Look. 
the president is uh, is committed to this, right? This is a policy that he put forward because he wanted to give a little bit of breathing room to the American people, to the middle class. This is also a campaign promise that he wanted to keep uh, because it, he knew how important it was to so many people. Uh, we're talking about almost 40 million people who are going to get borrowers who are going to get the uh, who are going to be able to get the effects of this policy. 23 million people are going to see their debt, their college debt. All, already uh, wiped away. That matters. That matters. We're talking about 90% of the folks who are going to be, of the borrowers who are going to be getting this relief are making under $75,000. So he's committed to this and he's going to make sure, do everything that we can to make this an easy process. And we've seen that already uh, from the website. And the thing to remember, I think the question to ask or the thing to actually really think about here is what Republicans are trying to do. When you look at these lawsuits across the country, they're coming from Republicans. And Republicans want to take away this essential need that folks, again, 90% of these folks are making 70, less than $75,000, who need a little bit of more of a breathing room, who need an opportunity to put money down on a house, who need an opportunity to get a family started, who need an opportunity to just live their lives in a little, ease, a little bit easier way. And so that's the question to be asking. Why are Republicans doing this? Madam, one more. 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 Mad